Maybe I can start. Is everybody want to say something? Okay. So let's start the last lecture of the afternoon. So the goal is to understand the Legendre transformation. So, um, the basic example is the V B of vector space. Uh, here, finite dimensional, of course, so let me just say finite dimensional. I think, I, I think, for me, finite dimensional. Maybe we don't need that. <clears throat> and uh, we start the inner space. So from the motivation of the last lecture, you want to have some way of mapping velocity to momentum. That's the physical language that is going on here. The genre of some function on V is a function on V star. Okay. So the way to think about this, my students all tell me I only have one picture, it's this. <laughs> my only picture. If I have a, a fiber of the tangent bundle, say of uh, some base point here, a, I don't know, base point, I don't care. It's just a, maybe ABC, it doesn't matter. Base point. No, some base point. Okay. And this is the fiber over X. That's V. Okay. And we have some function on V. We have some function to find on V on this fiber. And this Legendre, Legendre, maybe I'll call this L, script L of F, 
Legendre will take the functions on the fibers uh, to uh, a function on the fibers of here's x over here and here's the perpendicular. That's two steps. And here's m. Now you're going to hate me because I'm going to change notation right in the middle of this. If we have a point in the base, the physics guys and the Arnold will refer to the coordinate here to the, and to the point and everything is Q. Okay. The physics guys and Arnold will refer to the things here as Q point. That's velocity. Okay. And the functional here, the function that you will be talking about here is P. Okay? Yes. So Q point is one point? In no. That, I'm glad you asked that. It means the variable of that fiber. No, no, it's for one thing if you have a point it's just one well, in the well in that space. It, 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 you will see you it takes some getting used to it, I'm terribly sorry. But if you if you will hit, have coordinates Q down here and, and Arnold will call these coordinate points Q and he will call the coordinate points in the fiber associated fiber Q point. Okay? And you will have down here Q, because it's the same base. The base is not going to change on this set, right? It's the manifold. So you will have coordinates here Q, and you will have co momentum coordinates above that, which are called P. Okay? Okay? Yes? So where is F in our picture? F is just in that? F? F, <clears throat> I, I greatly appreciate all these questions because, because uh, if I start writing everything, it's, it gets crazy, right? F, I just said, what we're going to define this thing is on a vector space, just some stupid thing. But I'm going to define it here on the bundles fiber-wise. So I define on each fiber and it'll be smoothly varying and so on. Okay? Is that okay, Maria? No, you're not okay with it. I'm going to talk about the Legendre transformation of a function on a vector space to a function on the dual space. But I'm going to apply it to a function on the tangent bundle or coordinates on the tangent bundle uh, uh, to the coordinates on the cotangent bundle. Okay. So does that mean that F stays in that fiber? F is on this fiber, but yeah, I'm going to transform it to a function which I will call H on the other fiber. Okay. So, uh, and I call it H for Hamilton. Because if you transform the Lagrangian of the uh, Euler Lagrange equation, you will get it in Hamilton. It's a little bit confusing. I'm sorry I'm confusing, but it's a, I think it's confusing. Okay. Just keep that in mind and let's start, start with a silly situation. The basic picture of Arnold. I strongly recommend you take a look at uh, the corresponding part of Arnold. Uh, it's this. This is the x-axis, so forget p and q, but that x will be q. This is the... And this is, if you like, uh, a vector value of x, but maybe just uh, one dimension, I don't care. And this is the y-axis, 
That's one dimension. And now, our node takes a linear function. This is high school mathematics. Okay. Let's just do this in, in, in high school mathematics. Okay. Usually, if you understand high school mathematics well enough, you can do well in better math. This is a linear function. Y is a linear function of x. And unlike what I just wrote on the board with MV, uh, and unlike what I write, wrote in high school when I write y equals mx, there's a reason for m being slow, by the way, we will write here y equals pa. Okay. Now, okay. So if you like, P is the slope of that line, but if you, if you like even to be a little bit more careful, you think of this as being P of X, and you think of P as being a linear function. Okay? It is a linear function, right? When you write a line, Y equals P at times X, if you like, P times X means uh, uh, P1 times X1, P2 times X2, and so on, right? P, P is P of X. It's the linear functional P applied to the point X. Boom. Okay. But isn't P a linear functional on X? Hmm? Isn't P a linear functional on X? Uh, this is, I understand you're, you're thinking of the application, maybe, but this is just, think of it here. Okay. What he's saying, I'm going to say what he's saying. He's thinking ahead of us. I should really write P is a function of Q point. Right? Because Q point is the fiber variable uh, over the point Q. Right? That's what you're thinking. But let's keep it simple with a notation. Okay. And now, this is another function which is nonlinear. This is the function y equals f of x. So, just some function of x. Okay? And the only assumption here is that f is convex. As you mentioned, f should be convex. So f is convex. Of course, uh, I would like it to be smooth and so on. So in the one variable situation, it's derivative. Convex means it's derivative. It's what? Positive, I think. Uh, the second derivative is positive. Right? That's what convex means, second derivative. <clears throat> and now, interesting thing to do is to start taking tangents here to this curve, this convex curve, tangent here, tangent here, tangent here, tangent here, tangent here, oh, tangent there. And I did a bad job probably, but you all will agree that if f is convex, and I take all of these tangents, there'll be precisely one line that is parallel to that line, right? So, there will be a point x here, which depends on p, which depends on p, where that line and this line are parallel, a unique point. And that point, if the convex function is smooth, varies smoothly with the convex with with uh, the convex with p. If I change the 
So if I move the line smoothly, then this tangent line moves smoothly, and this point moves smoothly, everything moves smoothly. You can prove it. Okay. Then, you want to have a function here, and the function here you take is this. So, this length is the Legendre transform. geometry to make us understand it. So first always do the geometry to make us understand it, and then we do the analysis to do the computation. How is this point determined? Well, it's completely obvious that this length is, is maximized here. Yeah. So that this, this length is determined, this is the maximal length
probably, I think I want a plus sign here. I'm always making some mistake. Okay, with respect to x, I get uh, the derivative of x is minus p, um, and the derivative uh, ah minus oh ah ha 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 I do want plus thank yeah I do want plus plus uh, I'm not sure I want plus lambda uh, par partial f is back to x. Right? Right? That's great, in it, really. Well, okay, that's that, so that has to be zero. And with respect to lambda, that's only a function of one variable, so uh, that means, oh, that's good. But that's y minus f of x equals zero. And with respect to y, that's, uh, okay, here we go, minus p of x plus lambda plus lambda, oh, minus, minus lambda f of x, right? No, well, with respect to what? No, uh, plus lambda. I'm sorry. Are we differentiating with respect to y? No, no, no. Yeah. Am I making a mistake? We're differentiating with respect to y, correct? Hmm? So we're differentiating with respect to y. Yeah, y is just uh, uh, one variable, so I'm. Uh, to lambda is that okay this says oh I, I what do I want what do I want lambda to be I want I want lambda to be I want to get the right sign here um, lambda is here minus one if, if it doesn't matter probably oh it's okay no it's not okay So it looks to me I get a sign I don't like it. So I think the first first differentiation we have minus sign minus lambda because it was minus f of x, right? Oh, maybe that's good. Yeah, maybe that's good. And lambda equals minus. Uh, uh, I bring it over here. Yes, and lambda equals minus one. Right? And so this will be, it be what I want, P equals PF, PX. Right? What was lambda again? Hmm? Lambda was what? The Lagrange multiplier. Lambda's. I mean, this is this whole business of Lagrange multiplier, right? Lambda's a Lagrange multiplier. So this is the whole business of how to, how to find a critical point of the restricted, uh, right? And I think the signs are right now. I, I think we look, we're young. Well, I'm lucky. You guys are, okay. So, wait a minute. So, oh, this, this minus sign is because I had a minus sign in front of the, uh, of, of F. All right. And this, okay, everything's good. Okay. So, okay. So what we get out of this is you know you believe it. I mean I just I just did the mathematics, but you believe it with the jump that P equals the F the F. Right? <laughs> well it means that the, that the gradient of, uh, of the function of the, the nonlinear function is the same as the linear function, right? Which it has to be. I mean that's what we we learn. 
But this equation here is an implicit equation for p, for uh, x of x equal x of p. Right? Regard that, regard that equation as an equation for this function x of p. Okay. Now, so let's get back to our. This is it. I mean, there's nothing more to do. Right? It's it's really simple, right? Uh, uh, the, but it's highly non-trivial because of this implicit nature of this equation. Right? So we have now f is the Lagrangian on q and q point. Okay. <laughs> and these q and q point are coordinates. So the, the genre transformation is stupid in this formalism. It's q, q prime, and I'm getting to what I, I'm doing here. Yes. I'm gonna, q, q point goes to q p. All right. So here, p is a function of, is a genre of q point. Because right? it's fiberglass. Now do you get my, my picture here? Right? You have Q and Q point, and these are the coordinates here in this tangent bundle. You have Q and P, and these are the coordinates in the cotangent bundle. Legendre, it's a product. Legendre takes Q to Q and Q point to P. Now you're happy. Right? Q P is a function of Q point. Right? Okay. Okay. And now the Lagrangian, the, 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 the genre of the Lagrangian of, of L Okay, here we go. This is, this is the change. Wait a minute, I, I need to write this in a better way. Um, no, I guess this is okay. This is, this is the, the Legendre of L. Okay. What is the Legendre of L? It's this length here. Right? So it is P Q point. This is what you're looking for, I think. That's this point here. Maybe if I put this here, P, this is P, Q point. Okay. And this thing here, what is this thing? This is the function we're, uh, uh, we're, we're uh, this, is, this is Lagrangian. 
So this is PQ minus L. I will write this for fun of Q and Q point. Of course, we had it, right? But I'm meaning here because I'm over here in the, in the cotangent bundle. I must have Q point is a function of P. Uh, P is a function of Q point. No, Q point is a function of P. Because I want this to be a function of P on the side. Right? Okay? Yes? So, what is P times Q? Hmm? P times Q prime? Let's review this. I'm making a Legendre transformation fiber wise. Okay? And I'm changing the function Q on the fiber Q point to the momentum function P. Right? This is where this is the map. Right? And that's the same as so. This is what I, I know was a word. I pronounce your name wrong always. I don't, right? Is that more or less right? If I change here, x, if I write here q point, q point, um, then you'll be happy, I hope. Yes. All right? <laughs> so q point is a function. Of P. Right? Yeah? Okay. Now? Ready? I want to. This thing will be called the Hamiltonian of P and Q. I'm just calling it that. Okay. So I make the transformation of the, Legend of the Lagrangian by the Legendre transformation, and I get what I'm calling the Hamiltonian of PQ. Here it is. But it's very hard to understand here in this notation because Q point is a function of P and so on. I mean, this is very, very implicit. Okay? Very, very implicit. Very abstract. Nobody is happy. Okay. Now. Now. So this, is the, this is the Lagrangian. This is the Legendre transformation. This is the Hamiltonian that results in. Now, we will look at the partial derivative of H with respect to P and the partial derivative with respect to Q of H. Okay. This gives us a vector field, uh, partial H, and I'm telling you the correct order here for physics, DDQ plus partial H DDP. Okay? You agree? When you have a function, you have its derivatives and you get this vector field. Okay. The ODE of this vector field is Q point 
equals V H E Q. And P point equals D H D B. Right? That is the ordinary that is that's the ordinary differential equation of the vector. Do you agree? No, you don't like this. I think it's uh, D H. No. you 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 wanna you want me to make a sign change? No, this is sign change. Yeah, but he, you're, you're just being formal and applying the physics in the back of your head. Don't do it. If you have a vector field, dh dq, partial dq, dh. Yeah. Yeah, it's a vector field, but it's a No, I think you're right. I think this is about a vector field. No, no, I, no, no, no I'm, I'm, making, I'm making a mistake. I made, you know, I made a mistake, and you're right. <clears throat> Who brought this? I think uh, Deepak brought this. Thank you very much, because I made my first mistake. get this right now. Now, I, I, what I want to do, excuse me, I have to think, I'm very tired, by the way. Uh, uh, let's see here. I want to, I, what I want to do is I want to transform this Lagrangian over to this Hamiltonian field. So, what are the Lagrangian equations? The Lagrangian equation, I hope I did not erase. Somebody dictate to me the Lagrangian equations. You know them by heart. So DL, I'll, I'll try to test by memory. D, plus or minus? Now we're getting to Iman's point. Is that men or I'm on men? It's not the same thing. You don't care. So my name is Alain. <laughs> In Kurdish it means the great flag carrier. What about the H D um, for example, D, D H D P. What's this equal to? Well, isn't this equal to Q point? Right? And now what about D H? This is the point. I wanted to compute it. I computed to I didn't compute anything. Now I want to compute the H, the P, P, and the H, the Q. Why not? Okay. This is minus DL 
dq. Alright? And what's minus dl dq? Well, we have to use something here. And you guys dictate, oh here it is. Um, Pardon? That's what you call P equals DF. What are you pointing to? Uh, the left half of the board. This this is uh oh oh no, wait, wait. The left half. No, 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 no. Here's the LTQ. Here's the LTQ, right? Because that's equal. To the, you even told me the minus sign. Yeah. The LTQ is equal to this thing here. So I'm going to wait a minute. What's this thing here? The LDQ Q point. I'm getting very happy. Even Maria is almost happy. The LDQ point. She made me. She made me write Q point here because she wasn't understanding this unless I write Q point because we're making Legendre transformation with respect to Q point, right? What's the DLDQ point? It's the same as. In this notation here, the FDQ point is the same as P. That's the Legendre transformation using the Euler Lagrange equation. Think of it what we use. We, it's the, we, use, we use this equation and the Legendre transformation to write this thing equal to P point. Uh, minus. Right? You get it again? Was that What's a big point? The derivative of P. <laughs> this is a differential equation. Again, this is the Legendre equation. This tells us this guy here is equal to the derivative of this guy, so we need to know what this guy is. But this guy is the Legendre transformation guy. And the Legendre transformation guy is exactly P. P equals the LDQ point. Okay, that's what Maria made me write. Okay. So what we have here is, let me summarize it. Yeah. The, the Euler Lagrange equations. on the tangent bundle in the coordinates q, q point are transformed by Legendre to the Hamiltonian equations equations which have this form and that's what I was looking for I don't know what you'd like to write first uh, dh dq equals minus, what do you like to write first, q or p? I think q first. p point, oh, p, oh, 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 we write, we write the variables in the order that they are. So q point equals dh dp. P point equals minus the H and the Q. You got it? It might still be worth making a slow remark what we did. We had the Lagrangian equations written here for minimizing the energy functional is equivalent to the solution of this ODE. 
We transform this ODE by the Legendre transformation to the cotangent bundle, which has coordinates Q and P, and, we, and obtain the Hamiltonian equation. Now, that's certainly an improvement. Yeah, that's big time improvement. Now, fortunately, I have time to explain what that means. So this is an embedding of Lagrangian mechanics in Hamiltonian mechanics. By the way, if you do it again, you, Legendre of Legendre is the identity. So this is, this is really nice. It's sort of an evolution. It goes from tangent bundle to cotangent bundle, back to the tangent bundle. So it's a perfect thing. Okay. okay. So the meaning of this Now we're going to have some fun. Watch. Here is the cotangent bundle. Here is the manifold. Okay. Here is, well, let's take this fiber here over a point, uh, I don't care, x. So no coordinates, just x. And let's take a tangent vector here, which we call uh, tau at, at the point. Now we have to be careful. This is the fiber over x, and this is the point which is a a differential form at, at the point x. So this is the tangent vector at the point alpha of x. You get it? So x is a point in the manifold. This is a projection. You take a tangent vector upstairs. It's at it's some place in that fiber. The point we're taking is we're calling alpha of x. Okay? Now you do the following amazing thing. You take that vector there, and you push it down. Okay. So everybody knows you can push down a tangent vector, right? And you get a tangent vector down here, right? So just for fun, so just for fun, let me write this. This is in the tangent space at x. What's the fiber? Those are all the one forms on that tangent vector space, right? Right? So, so pi star is, is a projection to the manifold from yeah. the cotangent bundle. No! I'm glad you asked because it is confusing. If I take a tangent vector on a manifold and a mapping, mm -hmm. it maps it to the a tangent vector on the image manifold. Right? Mm -hmm. Push forward. Okay, so pi here is not the pi of... Pi is the mapping from the cotangent bundle to the manifold. And pi star? Pi sub star, oh, I see, it's a question of stars. Uh, it's the push forward of that tangent vector. Okay. I think it's, it's worth discussing. If you have, if you have, a, 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 if you have an n to m, and you have a point here, x, and you have, this is a mapping phi, and, 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 you, and, and phi takes uh, x to phi of x. Yeah? Then phi star maps the tangent space at x of n to the tangent space of phi of x of n. Pi star. Okay? You push forward. It's called the differential of the map. Okay? Okay? Yeah, look where it is. It's at the tangent space of M. Look where alpha is. 
It's a one form on the tangent space of n. So what I do is I just apply alpha of x to this thing. You got it? You should be excited because that was a completely canonical construction. Right? Given anything on the tangent space of the cotangent bundle, right? You have a way of evaluating it and getting a one form. I'm evaluating, I'm getting a, a number associated to that thing. This is what is called lambda of tau. And this is not a Lagrange multiplier. <laughs> yes? Any one form, uh, any <coughs> point in the fiber of the cotangent bundle over the point X. I haven't used anything. Ah, okay, so that's, okay, so let's let's try this. You you give me a point on the base. Okay? And I say, okay, I'm going to look at uh, tangent vectors above that point. All right? Or not even better. I'm going to look at tangent vectors somewhere upstairs. And if there's somewhere upstairs, it's above some point. <laughs> I'm going to call that point X. Maybe that was the bed. If I'd done it that way, you would be confused. So I start upstairs with a tangent vector someplace. It's over a point x. And it's at a point alpha of x, which is a one form. And now I push it down to the. Now I get a tangent vector on the base. And I apply the one form to it. I get a number. This is a number given by God. Well, the word canonical comes from the Bible. I mean, it's a little bit Christian, but I mean, maybe we shouldn't have Christianity play a role. But I'm sorry. So, we picked a face. How is that canonical? Yeah, psychologically, I gave a bad lecture just now. Let's start again. Take a point in the cotangent bundle. Any point. Take a tangent vector at that point. Any tangent vector. That point lies over a unique point in the base. Call that x. That point of the cotangent bundle is a one form, is in that fiber, so it's a one form on that tangent space. So I push down the, the tangent vector and I apply the one form. Right? You don't need any politician for this. It's given to you by God. You know, I don't go to church, but it doesn't matter. God gave us it. You, you agree, it's canonical. Okay? It's a canonical one form. It has a name in classical mechanics. It's called the Liouville. Liouville is a French mathematician of, of the late, late 18th, uh, 19th and early 20th century. Liouville. It's called the Liouville form of this thing. Okay? Canonical form. Okay? That should make us incredibly happy that there is a canonical one form on the cotangent bundle and there is nothing canonical on the tangent bundle. Let me say it for the record. There is nothing canonical on the tangent bundle, but there is something canonical on the cotangent bundle. And therefore we need a way of going from the tangent bundle to the cotangent bundle to use that. And the way is called the genre. Okay? Isn't that reasonable? Okay, let's compute lambda. Okay? I'm going to tell you the answer and you can have the fun computing, it's trivial. So lambda in coordinates. EQ, a QP. Yeah. 
Now, what does it mean Q and what does it mean P now in coordinates? Okay. Okay. So let's say Q is the base coordinate is Q1 through Qn. There, there's absolutely no question of what that means. Right? Right? P is a one form. Right? P is a, a point in the cotangent bundle. So therefore it is a one form. So P equals as a one form is equal to sum PI PI D Q I. You agree? Because DQI, DQ1 through DQN are as a basis, is a frame for the cotangent bundle. And so P is a linear combination with functions of that frame. Okay. So P is equal, P is equal to P1 to Pn. Okay. Okay. Now, if you do the computation, lambda is equal. <coughs> Well, lambda, what is lambda equal to if you have a vector, where the heck is the cotangent bundle here? Here, if you have a vector which is in the fiber direction, it gets killed by this projection. So lambda has to be trivial on this vector. It gets projected and gets evaluated. So lambda has to be trivial in the fiber direction. That gives you a hint what lambda has to be, right? It has to be trivial in the fiber direction because this projection kills it. So that has to be in the base. And in fact, if lambda is equal to PDQ. Obviously, it's only going to involve the base variable because we projected and, and did something in the base. And if you compute it out, it's PDQ. You understand what that means? That means these functions, that mean all of is right. P1, PQ1, and so on. This is a linear bit of form. And the key structure, that is a canonical structure, but just as canonical is the